Now, in this lecture, we will find out the length of line segment X. In the drawing, we have a regular hexagon. A regular hexagon is a closed polygon with six equal sides and six equal angles. And we also know that one side of this regular hexagon, the length of one side, side AB, it is equal to two units, therefore all the other sides of this regular hexagon will be equal to two units in their lengths. So AF equals to two units, F equals to two units, ED equals to two units, DC equals to two units, BC equals to two units, AB equals to two units, <coughs> and we also know that line segment PB, this line segment PB is equal to four units, and our mission is to find out the length of line segment PA that is equal to X. Okay, so first of all, we will find out uh, what is the sum of the angles in any regular hexagon. So I draw a regular hexagon. And we calculate what is the sum of any regular hexagon. This is actually a regular hexagon. All of its sides are equal to each other, and also all of its angle, angles are equal to each other. So this is regular hexagon A, B, C. D, E, F in order to find out the sum of the angles in this the sum of the internal angles in this regular hexagon we join points B and D together by a straight line by joining points B and E we can make two quadrilaterals quadrilateral A, B, F, E and quadrilateral B, C, E, D we have already uh, know that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. That is to say, the sum of the angles in quadrilateral A, B, F, E is equal to 360 degrees. Likewise, the sum of the angles in quadrilateral B, C, E, D is also equal to 360 degrees. And therefore, the sum of the angles in this regular hexagon will be equal to the sum of the angles, the sum of the internal angles in these two quadrilaterals. That is to say, it will be equal to 360 degrees plus 360 degrees, that is actually 720 degrees. So we found out that the sum of the angles in any regular hexagon. It is equal to 720 degrees because of the fact that this regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F could be any regular hexagon. Okay, and 
what is the size of one angle in this uh, of one internal angles in this original hexagon the size of one angle will be equal to the sum of all the angles that is actually 720 degrees over the number of angles in this regular hexagon the number of angles is 6 right it is, it is 2 4 6 so the sum of the total angles is uh, 720 degrees over the number of angles will give us the size of one angle why because of the fact that all the angles uh, the, uh, the size of all the angles are equal to each other. This real hexagon has six equal angles, therefore we can divide the, the sum of the total angles that is 720 degrees over the number of the angles in this uh, regular hexagon, it will give us the size of one angle. So 720 degrees over 6 is 120 degrees. So I have found out that each angle here it is equal to 120 degrees in its size. Okay. So here angle F E D the internal angle equals to 120 degrees. And again E D C equals to 120 degrees. Angle DCB equals to 120 degrees. This angle equals to 120 degrees. This angle equals to 120 degrees. And finally, this angle, angle EFA equals to 120 degrees in its size. Okay. In the next step, we will extend side DC by a straight line. DC is one side of out of six sides out of six sides and of this regular hexagon and as a side of a regular hexagon it is absolutely a straight line we define this point as point L and when you extend a straight line by a straight line the result must be a straight line so DL is a straight line Let's so write it down. Line segment DL is a straight line because when you extend the straight line by straight line, the, the result is a straight line. DL is a straight line. Actually, have rule number one that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. <coughs> so, if we focus on this side of the straight line DL at point C, here, yeah, the sum of the angles according to the rule, rule number one must be equal to. 180 degrees. So which angles we have in this side of DL at point C, we have this angle that is equal to 120 degrees plus the missing angle that is actually angle BCL in total the sum of these two angles must be equal to 180 degrees according to rule number one. So 60 degrees plus angle BCL, the missing angle, in total they must be equal to 180 degrees according to rule number one that the sum of the angles, angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. Here we subtract 60 degrees from this equation 
and we get the, the missing angle, angle BCL equals to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, this is 100, uh, 100, actually here we have this angle equals to 120 degrees, so it is 120 degrees. This angle equals to 120 degrees. So 120 degrees plus the missing angle must be equal to 180 degrees according to rule number one. Here we subtract 120 degrees from this equation and we get that the missing angle, angle BCL equals to 180 degrees minus 120 degrees. It is equal to 60 degrees. So the missing angle, angle BCL equals to 60 degrees in its size. In the next step, from point B, we will draw perpendicular on DL. Again, from point B, we will draw perpendicular on DL. So, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle equals to 90 degrees, we call it all construction. We will define the docking point of the perpendicular from point B and DL as M. By doing this construction, we can then do the right triangle, triangle BCM. So I will copy the right triangle, triangle BCM in a new page and we will analyze this right triangle, triangle BCM. So this is actually the right triangle, triangle CBM that I copied from the original drawing. Angle BCM equals to 60 degrees according to rule number one. And this angle equals to 90 degrees, it is the right angle according to our construction. In addition, we know that CB or BC is equal to two units because of the fact that BC is one side out of the six sides of this regular hexagon and we know that all of its sides are equal to each other and each side from this regular hexagon is equal to two units in its length. Okay. So in this right triangle, triangle CBM, we know that cosine 60 degrees equals to CM over CB. CM over CB. Repeat again, cosine 60 degrees equals to CM over CB. Okay. Cosine 60 degrees, it is equal to 1 half, so we substitute cosine 60 degrees by 1 half. And it is equal to CM. CM is the missing nine segment. So we leave it as it is over CB. CB equals to 2 units, so we substitute CB by 2. In conclusion, we found out that 1 half equal to Cm over 2, we will multiply this equation by 2, and we will get that Cm equals to 1 unit. So we can write here that Cm equals to 1 unit, and also in the original drawing that Cm, Cm equals to 1 unit. 
Likewise, we will continue to focus on the right triangle, triangle CBM. In the right triangle, triangle CBM, sinus 60 degrees. equals to BM over CM. Again, sine of 60 degrees equals to BM over CM. So, sine of 60 degrees, it is equal to square root of 3 over 2, so we substitute sine of 60 degrees by square root of 3 over 2. And it is equal to BM. BM is the missing line symmetry, so we leave it as it is over CM, CM equals to C again, sine of 60 degrees equals to BM over CB sine of 60 degrees equals to BM over the equation of CB And CB equals to 2 units, so, so we will substitute CB by 2. In conclusion, we found out that score to 3 over 2 equals to BM over 2. Here we multiply this equation by 2, and we get that the missing side, side BM, equals to the score to 3 units. Yeah, BM equals to the score to 3 units, and we can also write here. That BM equals to the square root of 3 units. In the next step, we focus on the right triangle, triangle PMB. This right triangle, triangle PMB. The length of CM is 1 unit. The length of side PC, line segment PC is unknown, so we define the length of line segment PC as A. PC equals to A according to our definition. And therefore, in total, the length of side PM this is PC plus CM. So PC is A, CM is 1, so PM equals to A plus 1. Okay. And MB equals to the square of units, and the hypotenuse BB equals to 3 units. So I copy the right triangle, triangle PMB in a new page, and we implement here the Pythagoras theorem. Side PM equals to A plus 1. Side MB equals to the square root of 3 units. And the approach PB equals to 3 units according to what is given us the question. So this is actually the right triangle, triangle PMB. The covered from the original drawing. Here by PT is a version for Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem, in any right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse in this right triangle, triangle PMB, is PB, and therefore the square of the hypotenuse is PB squared, and it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say, it must be equal to PM squared plus and B square. So according to the Pythagoras theorem, P B square equals to P M square plus M B square. And 
Did I put those PB equals to free list? Therefore, PB squared is free squared, that is 9. And it is equal to PM squared. PM equals to A plus 1. Therefore, PM squared is A plus 1 squared. Plus MB squared. MB squared to 3. Therefore, MB squared is equal to 3 squared. So 9 equals to 8 plus 1 squared. And the square to 3 squared is 3. So in conclusion, found out that according to the Pythagoras theorem, 9 equals to 8 plus 1 squared plus 3. Here we subtract 3 from this equation. And we get that 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 equals to 8 plus 1 square. Here we take a root out of this equation. And we get that the square to 6 equals to 8 plus 1. Here we will subtract 1, 1 from this equation. And we get that a, the missing 9 segment, equals to the square root of 6 minus 1 units. Okay, here A equals to the square root of 6 minus 1 units. So, we can write down in the original drawing that A equals to the square root of 6 minus 1 units. Here A equals to the square root of 6 minus 1 units. In the next step, we will join points C and A together by a straight line. By joining points A and C, we can do the triangle ABC. This is triangle ABC. We know that angle ABC, this angle, angle ABC, it is one out of the six interior angles of this regular hexagon, and we know that all the interior angles of this regular hexagon. They are equal to each other, and each of them it is equal to 120 degrees. Therefore, angle ABC equals to 120 degrees. And size, and we know that side AB equals to 2 units, and side BC it is also equal to 2 units. Both those sides they are not only the, the sides of the triangle ABC, but they are also. Uh, the sides of this regular hexagon, and we know that all the sides of, of any regular hexagon are equal to each other, and in this case, one side of this regular hexagon it is equal to two units. So I copy triangle ABC in the new page, and we'll implement in this triangle, triangle ABC, the law of cosines. But uh, first of all, I will remind you what is the law of cosines. The law of cosines is true in any triangle. This triangle, triangle ABC, could be any triangle. This is triangle ABC. We know that the length of side AB is equal to a unit, side AC equals to b units in its length, and finally, side 
BC, of triangle ABC equals to three units in its length, and the angle between side AB and side AC is theta. Then according to the law of cosines, C square equals to A square plus B square minus 2 times A times B times cosine theta. Repeat again, according to the law of cosines that is shown in any triangle, C square, C is the length of side BC, A is the length of side AB, and B is the length of side AC, so C square equals to A square plus B square minus 2 times A times B times cosine theta. Actually, you can implement the law of cosines in our triangle, triangle ABC, so I will copy triangle ABC. And you plan and will implement uh, the law of cosines in triangle ABC. This is time ABC that I copied from the original drawing. Angle ABC equals to 120 degrees in size. Side AB equals to 2 units. Side BC is also equals to 2 units. So we implement here the law of cosines. According to the law of cosines, here we find out the, the length of find AC by implementing in this triangle, triangle ABC, the law of cosines. So, according to the law of cosines, AC square equals to AB square plus BC square. minus 2 times AB times BC times cosine 120 degrees. Repeat again, actually, this equation is the implementation of the law of cosines in our triangle, triangle ABC. Again, AC square equals to AB square plus BC square minus 2 times AB times BC times cosine under 20 degrees. So AC square equals to AC square equals to AB square. AB equals to 2 units of AB square is 2 square that is 4 plus CB square. CB is 2, therefore CB square is 2 square that is 4 minus 2 times AB is 2 minus 2 times AB times BC. BC it is also 2 so it is minus 2 times 2 times 2 times cosine 120 degrees. The value of cosine 120 degrees is minus 1 half. So we substitute cosine 20 degrees by minus 1 half. So in this expression We have minus times minus, that is plus, so in total this expression will be a positive number. And 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 over 2 is 1, so two, those 2 will get cancelled. And therefore in total this expression equals to 2 times 2, that is 4. And therefore AC squared. equals to 4 plus 4 plus 4. That is to say AC squared equals to 4 plus 4 plus 4, that is 12. AC squared equals to, we we'll substitute 12 by 4 times 3. Here we we'll take out out of this equation and we get that AC equals to the square root of 4 
times three. Here we take four out of the root, the square root of four is two, therefore we get that AC equals to two, inside the root we left only with three, so it is two times square root of three. In conclusion, we found out that the length of this side, side AC of triangle ABC, it is equal to two times square root of three units. So, right in the original drawing, that the length of this side, side AC, is equal to two times square root of three units. Okay. I will copy triangle ABC in a new page again in order to find out the sizes of those two angles. We know that angle ABC equals to two units, the two other twenty degrees. So we find out the sizes of those two missing angles. Okay. So actually, this is triangle ABC that I call from the original drawing. AB equals to BC equals to two units. Because of the fact that AB equals to BC, we can implement the rule that in front of equal sides in the triangle are equal angles. So in front of those two equal sides, we have those two equal angles. Those two those two angles are equal to each other because they are located in front of equal sides. So if we define this angle as x, then this angle must be also equal to x. And we also know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees and especially in triangle ABC. So which angles we have in triangle ABC? We have x plus x plus 120 degrees, in total they must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles in the triangle is equal to 180 degrees. x plus x is 2x, so 2x plus 120 degrees equals to 180 degrees. Here we subtract 120 degrees from this equation. And we get that 2x equals to 180 degrees from 120 degrees, it is 60 degrees, so 2x equals to 60 degrees. Here we we'll divide this equation by 2 and we get that x equals to 60 over 2, that is 30 degrees. So if we know that angle x equals to 30 degrees, this angle, angle x equals to 30 degrees, and this angle, angle x, that is actually angle ACB is also equal to 30 degrees in its size. So we can write down in the original drawing that this angle ACB is equal to X, it is equal to 30 degrees. So actually we have the big angle, angle PCB, this angle, angle PCB equals to 120 degrees in its, in its size. The small angle, angle ACB equal, equals to 30 degrees in its size. And therefore, the missing angle, that is actually angle APC, will be equal to the big angle, that is actually angle PCB, minus the small angle, that is angle ACB. So, I'll copy the two angles in your plate and we'll see 
what is the size of the missing angle, angle PCA. Okay, so we have angle PCB. The big angle, angle PCB. is equal to 120 degrees in its size this is the big angle the small angle that is actually angle PCA This is angle PCA, it is equal to 30 degrees in its size. And therefore, the missing angle, angle, it is actually, this is the small angle, angle PCA, angle PCA, it is equal to, it is actually angle. A C B. You can see here the triangle A B C. It is angle A C B. That is equal to 30 degrees. So angle A C B equals to 30 degrees, and therefore the big angle that is actually angle P C B. minus the small angle that is actually angle ACB is equal to the missing angle that is actually angle PCA angle PCA I repeat again the big angle that is actually angle PCA PCB this is the big angle angle PCB that is equal to 120 degrees minus the small angle ACB that is equal to 30 degrees will give us the missing angle, that is actually angle PCA. So again, the big angle, angle PCB, is equal to 120 degrees. Minus the small angle, that is angle ACB, this is 30 degrees. And it is equal to angle PCA. And the subtraction of the big angle from the small angle, give us the missing angle, angle PCA. So other 20 degrees minus 40 degrees, it is 90 degrees. So from that, then the missing angle, angle PCA, is equal to 90 degrees. That is to say it is a right angle. And because of the fact that the missing angle, angle PCA, it is a right angle, this is a right angle, therefore triangle PCA, is the right triangle. So I'll copy uh, the right triangle, triangle PCA in a new page and we will implement the Pythagoras law on the right triangle, triangle PCA. The right triangle, triangle PCA is this green triangle. So I copy this green triangle, triangle PCA in a new page and implement here the Pythagoras theorem. So actually, this is the right triangle, triangle PCA that I copied from the original drawing. It 
in this right triangle, AP is the line segment that we are looking for, it is equal to X. Here, AP equals to X, X according to what is given as the equation, we have to find out the value of X. We have only found out that PC equals to A, and it is, it is equal to the square root of 6 minus 1 units. PC equals to the square root of 6 minus 1 units. And finally, we have only found out that AC, the left of side AC, equals to 2 times square root of 3 units. Okay, now we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on this right triangle, triangle PCA. So here by PT is the version for Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem, in any right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse in this right triangle, triangle PCA, is PA, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is PA square, and it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it must be equal to PC square plus AC square. Repeat again, according to the Badagos solution in the right triangle, triangle PCA, PA square equals to PC square plus AC square. PA equals to X according to what is given as the equation, therefore PA square equals to X square. And it is equal to PC square. PC equals to the square root of 6 minus 1 units, therefore PC square is the square root of 6 minus 1 square plus AC square. AC equals to 2 times square root of 3 units, therefore AC square is 2 times square root of 3 square. In conclusion, according to the Pythagoras theorem in the right triangle, triangle PCA, we found out that X square equals to 6 minus 1 square plus 2 times square root of 3 square. We will find out the value of this expression, square root of 6 minus 1 square, according to the algebraic identity, it states that a minus b square equals to a square plus b square minus 2 times a times b. According to the, this algebraic identity, the value of c, uh, square root of 6 minus 1 square In our specific expression, A equals to the square root of 6 units and B equals to 1. And this expression equals to A squared plus B squared minus 2 times AB. So it is equal to A squared, A is square root of 6, therefore A squared is square root of 6 squared, that is 6, plus B squared. B is 1, therefore b squared is 1 squared, that is also 1, so it is 6 plus 1, minus 2 times a is square root of 6 units, and b is 1. So in conclusion, we found out that the value of this expression, square root of 6 minus 1 squared, it is 6 plus 1 minus 2 times square root of 6. Therefore, we substitute square root of 6 minus 1 squared by 6 plus 1 minus 2 times square root of 6. And we get that x squared equals to the square root of 6 minus 1 square equals to 6 plus 1 minus 2 times square root of 6 and we have to add here 2 times square root of 3 square plus 2 times square root of 3 square so in conclusion we found out that x square equals to 6 plus 1 is 7 so it is 7 minus 2 times square root of 6 and 2 times square root of 3 square is 2 square root of 4 times square root of 3 square root of 3 and 4 times 3 is 12. In conclusion, we found out that 
x square equals to 7 plus 2f minus 2 times root uh, of 6 units. So x square equals to 7 plus 2f is 19 minus 2 times root of 6. So here we take a look at all of this equation and we find out that x equals to the square root of 19 minus 2 times square root of 6 units. So x is the line segment that we are looking for. AP that is equal to x. It is equal to either the square root of 19 minus 2 times square root of 6 units or in terms of numbers x equals to 3.755 units. And repeat again. If I don't that the value of x, the value that we are looking for, it is equal to either the square root of 19 minus, uh, minus 2 times square root of 6 units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 3.755 units. Okay. We finish this, this question in the next step and summarize the lecture. In the drawing, we have a regular hexagon. A regular hexagon is a closed polygon with six equal sides. All those two sides are equal to each other, and six equal interior angles. Two, four, six. Those six interior angles are equal to each other. In addition, we know that the length of one side of this regular hexagon is equal to two units, therefore all the other sides must be also equal to two units. And all of six angles are also equal to each other. And we also know that the length of line segment PB is equal to three units, and our mission is to find out the length of side PA that is equal to X. Okay, first of all, in the first step, we found out the sum of the angles in this uh, uh, regular hexagon, or we actually found out the sum of the angles in any uh, regular hexagon. So this regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F could be any regular hexagon. And we join points B and E together by a straight line. By joining points B and E, we created E two quadrilaterals. Quadrilateral A, B, F, E, and quadrilateral B, C, E, D. And we know that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. That is to say, the sum of the angles in quadrilateral A, B, F, E is 360 degrees, and the sum of the angles in quadrilateral B, C, E, D is also equal to 360 degrees. And therefore, the sum of the angles on those uh, two quadrilaterals it is equal to 360 degrees plus 360 degrees. And this is, of course, the sum of the angles in this regular hexagon. That is to say, we found out that the sum of the angles in any regular hexagon it is equal to 720 degrees. Why? Because of the fact that this hexagon, this regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F, could be any regular hexagon and therefore the sum of the angles in any regular hexagon it is equal to 720 degrees and we also know that any regular hexagon has also six equal angles six equal interior angles that is to say here two four six those six interior angles they are equal to each other in their sizes. So, the sum of the angles 
And this way, you know, x around, this is 720 degrees. Although the number of the angles in this way, you know, x around, this is 6, will give us the size of one angle. Why? Because of the fact that all the angles, all the two angles in any angle of x around are equal to each other. So if we divide the total sum of the angles in this regular hexagon or in any regular hexagon by the number of the angles, we will get the size of one angle. So 720 degrees, that is the sum of the angles in this regular hexagon or in any regular hexagon over the number of the angles, that is 6, will give us the size of one angle. So 720 degrees over 6 is 120 degrees. So we found out that, that the size of each angle in any regular hexagon is, it is equal to 120 degrees. So therefore all those 6 interior angles they are equal to 120 degrees in their sizes. Okay, so in the next step we extended side DC, this side DC by straight line. And, and, and we define this point as L. DC is the side of a regular hexagon, it is absolutely a straight line. And then we extended the straight line DC by straight line, we got DL. When we extend the straight line by straight line, the result must be a straight line. Therefore, DL is a straight line. Okay, okay. I feel that DL is a straight line. And we have the rule that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. DL is a straight line. So if we focus on this side of the straight line DL, at point C, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees according to rule number one. So which angles we have in this side of DL is point C, we have 120 degrees plus the missing angle. BCL into the VCL into the they must be equal to 180 degrees according to rule number one. Okay, I repeat again. Uh, the sum of the angles on one side of the side line DL must be equal to 180 degrees. So the sum of the angles on this side of the side line DL is point C. We have which angles we have in this side of DL is point C. We have 120 degrees plus the missing angle, angle BCL. BCL. So 120 degrees plus angle BCL must be equal to 180 degrees according to rule number one. We subtracted 120 degrees from this equation and we found out that the missing angle, angle BCL, this angle BCL equal to 180 degrees minus 120 degrees, it is equal to 60 degrees. So this angle, angle BCL equals to 60 degrees. Okay, then from point B we draw perpendicular on DL. Again, from point B we draw perpendicular on DL. That is to say, this angle equals 90 degrees and this angle equals 90 degrees according to our construction. We define the touching point of the perpendicular from point B and DL as M. By doing this construction, we get it here the right triangle, triangle BCM. So I copy the right triangle triangle BCM in this new page and I analyze triangle BCM. This is triangle BCM that I copy from the original drawing. This angle equals to 60 degrees according to rule number one and this angle equals to 90 degrees according to our construction. BC, this is one side out of the six sides of this regular hexagon and therefore it is equal to 2 units because of the fact that all the sides of this regular hexagon are equal to each other and each of them is equal to 2 units. So BC equals to 2 units. So in this uh, triangle, right triangle, triangle BCM, we know that cosine 60 degrees equals to CM over CB. Cosine 60 degrees equals to CM over CB. Cosine 60 degrees is 1 up, so we substitute cosine 60 degrees by 1 up, and it is equal to CM. CM is the missing side, so we leave it as it is. 
over CB, CB is equal to 2 units, therefore we substitute CB by 2. In conclusion, we found out that 1 half equals to CM over 2, here we multiply this equation by 2, and we found out that CM equals to 1 unit. Here, CM equals to 1 unit, we can learn that in the original moment that CM equals to 1 unit. Likewise, we continue to focus on this right triangle, triangle CBM, in this right triangle, triangle CBM, sine of 60 degrees equals to the square of sine of 60 degrees equals to BM over CB. Sine of 60 degrees equals to BM over CB. BM is the missing sign, so we leave it as it is. And CB equals to 2 units, so we substitute CB by 2. In conclusion, we found out. And the value of sine of 60 degrees is equal to 3 over 2, so we substitute the sine of 60 degrees by square to 3 over 2. And square to 3 over 2 equals to BM over 2. Here we multiply this equation by 2, and we found out that the missing sine sine BM this is equal to square to 3 units. So here, we can write down the original domain that BM equals to the square to 3 units. Then we focused on the right triangle triangle PMB. In this right triangle triangle PMB, PM equals to PC plus CM. Again, PM equals to PC plus CM. CM equals to 1 and PC is unknown, so we defined the value of PC as A. And therefore PM equals to PC plus CM, that is to say it is A plus 1. So the value for side PM is A plus 1 units. BM equals to the square of 3 units. And PB equals to 3 units. The put of PB equals to 3 units. According to what is given us the question. So I copied the right triangle, triangle PMB in a new page. And we implemented here the collateral store. This is the right triangle, triangle PMB, that I copied from the original domain. We already found out that PM equals to A plus 1 units. MB equals to square to 3 units, and the opponent's BB equals to 3 units according to what is given us the question. So we actually implemented here the Pythagoras story on this right triangle, triangle PMB. According to the Pythagoras story, in any right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the source of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse in this right triangle is PB. And therefore, the square of the hypotenuse is PV squared. And it must be equal to the sum of the source of the perpendiculars. That is to say, it must be equal to PM squared plus MB squared. PM squared plus MB squared. PB equals to 3. Therefore, PB squared is 3 squared. That is 9. And it must be equal to PM squared. PM equals to A plus 1. Therefore, PM squared equals to A plus 1 squared plus... Uh, mb square, mb is square to 3, therefore mb square is square to 3 square. So in conclusion, we found out that we only do the Pythagoras theorem in the right triangle PMB, 9 equals to a plus 1 square plus square to 3 square. So 9 equals to a plus 1 square and the square to 3 square is 3. So 9 equals to a plus 1 square plus 3. Here we subtracted 3 from this equation and found out that 9 minus 3 is 6. So 6 equals to a plus 1 square, 3 minus 3 is 0. So 6 equals to a plus 1 square. Here we took a root out of this equation and found out that the square root of 6 equals to a plus 1. Here, the square root of 6 equals to a plus 1. Okay. Here we subtracted 1, one from this equation and found out finally that a, the missing side, it is equal to the square root of 6 minus 1 units. So we can write down in the original drawing. That the line segment PC that is equal to A according to our definition it is equal to the square root of 6 minus 1 units. In the next step we join points A and C together by a straight line. By joining points A and C we can do the triangle ABC. This is triangle ABC. The value of this angle, angle ABC it is equal to 120 degrees in size, right? Because of the fact that angle ABC it is one out of the six angles 
of this uh, real hexagon, and we know that each angle, this, each interior angle of this regular hexagon is equal to 120 degrees in its size. Therefore, angle ABC equals to 120 degrees, AB equals to 2 units, and BC also equals to 2 units. Both sides, they are not only the sides of triangle ABC, but they are the sides of the regular hexagon, and we know that all, all the sides of this regular hexagon are equal to each other, and each Side it is equal to two units in its length. So I copied I, uh, I copied triangle ABC in a new page, and we implemented this triangle triangle ABC. The law of cosines. This is triangle ABC. This is the coverage of the original domain. Side AB equals to side BC equals to two units. This angle equals to 120 degrees. And uh, we implemented here the law of cosines. What is the law of cosines? The law of cosines is true in any triangle. So, uh, the law of cosines is true in any triangle. So, this triangle, triangle ABC, could be any triangle. We know that side AB equals to A, side AB equals to A units in its length, side AC equals to B units in its length, and side BC equals to C units in its length. According to the law of cosines, this is true in any triangle. C square equals to A square plus B square minus 2 times A times B times cosine theta. Theta is the angle between side AB and side AC. Again, C square equals to A square plus B square minus 2 times A times B times cosine theta. Okay? Repeat again. C square equals to A square plus B square minus 2 times A times B times cosine theta. We implement it. The law of cosines in our triangle, triangle ABC. According to the law of cosines, if we implement it in this triangle, triangle ABC, we get that AC square equals to AB square plus CB square minus 2 times AB times CB times cosine 120 degrees. Again, AC square equals to AB square plus BC square minus 2 times AB times BC times cosine under 20 degrees. This equation is the implementation of the row of cosines in our triangle, triangle ABC. So AC squared equals to AB squared. AB equals to 2, therefore AB squared is 2 squared, that is 4. Plus BC squared. BC is 2, therefore BC squared is 2 squared, that is 4. Minus 2 times AB is 2, and BC is also 2. So it is minus 2 times 2 times 2, and cosine under 20 degrees, this is minus one half, so we substitute the cosine under 20 degrees by minus one half. This expression, in this expression we have minus two, minus times minus, and minus two times minus is plus, so in total this uh, expression, this number will be a positive number. So what we have here, in this expression we have two times two, that is four, and 2 over 2 is 1, so those 2 will get cancelled, and we left only with 2 times 2, that is 4. So in conclusion, we found out that AC squared equals to 4 plus 4 plus 4. AC squared equals to 4 plus 4 plus 4, that is 12. So AC squared equals to 12. Here we substitute 12 by 4 times 3, so AC squared equals to 4 times 3. Here we took a root out of this equation, we found out that AC equals to square root of 4 times 3. Here we took 4 out of the root. The score to 4 is 2, so in conclusion, found out that AC equals to 2, and inside the root we left only with 3. So it is 2 times score to 3. Okay, so here we can write down that the left of this side, side AC, triangle ABC equals to 2 times score to 3 units. Then I copied triangle ABC in the new page again in order to find out the sizes of those two angles. We know that this angle ABC equals to 120 degrees, and we have to find out also the sizes of those two angles. So, this is triangle ABC, it's the covet of the original domain, side AB equals to side BC equals to 2 units, this angle equals to 120 degrees, and we have to find out the sizes of those two angles. Because of the fact that side AB equals to side BC, they are both equal to two units of order equal to each other. We have the rule that in front of equal sides in the triangle there are equal angles. So in front of those two sides that are equal to each other, we have those two angles that must be also equal to each other. 
So if this angle is x, then this angle will be also equal to x because of the fact that they are equal to each other. So, and we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle, and especially in triangle ABC, equals to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in triangle ABC? We have this angle that is x, plus this angle that is x, plus this angle that is equal to 120 degrees. In total, they must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. x plus x is 2x, so in this side of the equation we have 2x plus 120 degrees, and it must be equal to 180 degrees. Here we subtracted 120 degrees from this equation and found out that 2x equals to 180 degrees minus 120 degrees it is 60 degrees. Here we divided this equation by 2 and found out that x equals to 60 degrees over 2, that is 30 degrees. So this angle that is equal to x equals to 30 degrees and this angle that is x, that is, it is also equal to 30 degrees. So this angle is actually angle ACB. So we found out that angle ACB equals to 30 degrees in its size, so we can write down the original drawing that this angle, angle ACB, this is angle ACB, so you can see ACB is equal to 30 degrees in its size. So we have here the big angle, it is angle PCB that is equal to 120 degrees. We have the small angle, angle ACB, that is equal to 30 degrees. Therefore, the missing angle, the, the angle PCA, angle PCA, this is the missing angle, will be equal to the big angle, that is angle PCA, minus the small angle, that is angle ACB. Okay? Let's meet again. The big angle is angle PCB, that is equal to 120 degrees. The small angle is angle ACB, that is equal to 30 degrees. And therefore the missing angle, that is actually angle PCA, and I repeat again, the big angle is angle PCB, that is equal to 120 degrees. The small angle is angle ACB, this angle, that is equal to 30 degrees. So the big angle that is under 20 degrees minus the small angle that is 30 degrees will give us the missing angle, angle PCA. Okay, so angle, the big angle that is angle PCB, and this is equal to 120 degrees minus the small angle that is angle ACB, that is equal to 30 degrees, will give us the missing angle, angle PCA. So if we found out that the missing angle angle PCA equals to the big angle that is 120 degrees minus the small angle that is 30 degrees. 120 degrees minus 30 degrees, it is 90 degrees. So we found out that this missing angle, angle PCA equals to 90 degrees in its size. That is to say it is a right angle. And because of the fact that angle PCA is a right angle, therefore triangle PCA is a right angle. So a copy triangle PCA in the bridge has been implemented in triangle in PCA, the Pythagoras theorem. So this is actually the right triangle, triangle PCA, this angle equals to 90 degrees, therefore the green triangle PCA is the right triangle. So I copy the right green triangle in a new bridge and implemented in this right green triangle, the Pythagoras theorem. This is the right angle, triangle PCA, that is the copy from the original drawing. We found out that this angle equals to 90 degrees, therefore triangle PCA is the right angle. We have already found out that side PC equals to the square of 6 minus 1 units. We have already found out that CA equals to 2 times square of 3 units. And finally, PA equals to X, if only to what is given as the equation, we have to find out the value of PA. Okay, so we implemented here in this right angle, triangle. PCA, the Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem, in any right triangle, and especially in triangle PCA, the square of the apertures equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The apertures in this right triangle is PA, therefore the square of the apertures is PA square, and it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it must be equal to PC square plus to PC square plus AC square. Okay, so according to the Pythagoras one, in the right angle PCA, PA square equals to PC square plus AC square. So, PA equals to X, therefore PA square is X square. 
And it must be equal to the sum of the square of the perpendiculars. This is to say it must be equal to PC square. PC is square root of 6 minus 1, therefore PC square is square root of 6 minus 1 square. Plus AC square. AC is 2 times square root of 3, therefore AC square is 2 times square root of 3 square. Okay, in conclusion, we found out that x squared equals to the square root of 6 minus 1 square plus 2 times square root of 3 square. So here we have the expression square root of 6 minus 1 square. In order to find out the value of this expression, we implemented uh, the algebraic uh, identity. We implemented this expression, the algebraic identity, that a minus b squared equals to a squared plus b squared minus 2 times ab. In our specific expression, square root of 6 minus 1 squared, a is equal to the square root of 6 and b equals to 1. And therefore, a minus b squared, in our uh, a specific expression will be equal to a square, a square, a is square root of 6, therefore a square is square root of 6 squared, that is 6, plus b square. b is 1, so b square is 1 square, that is 1. So it is 6 plus 1, minus 2 times a, b. So it is minus 2 times a is square root of 6, and b is 1. So in conclusion, we found out that this expression square root of 6 minus 1 square according to this algebraic identity equals to 6 plus 1 minus 2 times square root of 6. Therefore, we can substitute this expression by 6 plus 1 minus 2 times square root of 6. And we have in our regular expression x square is 6 square root of 6 minus 1 square, so we substitute the square root of 6 minus 1 square by 6 plus 1 minus 2 times square root of 6 plus 2 times square root of 3 square. Okay, so we found out that x squared equals to 6 plus 1 minus 2 times square root of 6 plus 2 times uh, square root of 3 square. So x squared equals to 6 plus 1, that is 7, minus 2 times square root of 6, and 2 times square root of 3 square equals to 2 square, that is 4, uh, times square root of 3 square, that is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. So in conclusion, we found out that x squared equals to 7 minus 2 times square root of 6 plus 12. So x squared equals to 7 plus 12 is 19, minus 2 times square root of 6. Here we took out out of this equation and found out that x, this line segment that we are looking for, ap equals to x, is equals to either the square root of 19 minus 2 times square root of 6 units, or in terms of numbers, this expression equals to 3.755 units. So the value of this expression. Uh, line segment AB that is equal to x equals to either the square root of 19 minus 2 times square root of 6 uh, square or in terms of numbers AB that is equal to x it is equal to in terms of numbers x equals to 3.755 units okay thank you very much